review of I Came By, 2022 Netflix original with um, <clears throat> George McKay, who obviously I only know from uh, the movie 1917. And it's funny, they kind of do the same thing they did in 1917 here, where halfway through 1917, one of the leads just disappears forever. It's kind of the same thing here. So George McKay, he's only in the movie for about 25 minutes. Um, so even though he appears to be the lead, he's not really. Um, I would say it's an ensemble, but the screen time is shared equally between Jay, um, the mother of George McKay's character, and the bad guy, the judge guy. So, yeah, let's, let's talk about spoilers. I have a non-spoiler review in text, which is in the description if you want to read that. But, um, first of all, yes, I absolutely recommend this movie, and I think I'm going to ruin it for you if you've never seen it, okay? 100% go watch it. Even if it doesn't look like your thing, just give it a chance. Um, the first 30 minutes are kind of boring, but it gets worth it. Like, after those 30, after George McKay is gone, the movie's in full gears until it uh, stops. So yeah, I'll give you my uh, score right now. 8 out of 10, highly recommend it. Let's talk spoilers now. So I'm not going to give you the fake plot, okay? I'll give you the real plot. Basically, the real spoiler-filled plot is that there's this former judge who has a lot of powerful connections in the city. He has an extreme prejudice against um, gay East Indian people, or like Muslim or Persian, something like that. Um, so the reason for that is because his father cheated on his, his mother with a gay East Indian guy who was desperate. I don't remember the full story because honestly I don't care about his side of the story too much. He's a bad guy, very irredeemable character, but honestly one of the best villains I've seen in recent memory. I mean this judge guy, he is scarier than Michael Myers, okay? 100%. I believe that, wholeheartedly believe that because he is so realistic and grounded. He's literally just some, you know, seemingly innocent rich old white guy who fits in with society just fine and donates to, you know, he's a member of his community, he's friends with the chief of the police and stuff, like, you would not look at this guy and think, this guy harbors um, gay slaves, basically, in his basement. You know, you wouldn't really think that. But that's that's what he does, so... We follow this graffiti artist who's, like, a nonconformist and, like, anti-establishment, and he, his next, like, so he and his best friend, Jay, they break into rich people's houses and they spray paint the words I came by because that's like their slogan or their tagline or whatever on the rich people's houses walls just to like send a message I guess. But really he is kind of an insufferable character, he's very annoying, but he's not a bad character. Like I, I, I found it refreshing to find a main character that had a lot of flaws. Like he had more flaws than pros, more cons than pros. So it was a little bit refreshing just to watch a main character who is so deeply flawed like he is. Um, so I'll give credit where it's due. Um, yeah, he treats his mother like shit, and um, he eventually just, he breaks into a new target, this judge's home, and then he discovers the prisoner in the basement, in the secret, like, panic room uh, space. And he calls, he anonymously calls the police, and the police come, and they point out some really suspicious stuff. And this judge guy is very suspicious, like, you can tell, true psychopaths, while they usually appear quite charming and they fit in with society just fine. I mean, people can read each other's vibes. This guy's vibe is off. He, everything he does is creepy. The way he, like, I remember I said during, when I was watching this with my family, I was like, wow, he even makes swimming look creepy. Like, he was just swimming by himself in a pool and it was super creepy. So, yeah, he is a very, very, I don't even know what to say. He's just like off the rails psychopath and I loved it because, and I loved it because it was grounded and realistic and plausible. It could absolutely happen in real life. You know, you, you maybe your neighbor's doing this. Just like take a look left and right of your house right now. Those neighbors, maybe they're not as innocent as they look. Maybe they're harboring people in their basement, right? You don't know. So yeah, that's that's where the movie excels. It's um, it's a thriller, the drama, the tension, the unpredictableness, and just the general shocking fear factor of it all. It is quite a frightening movie, although there are a lot of cheap jump scares. Like, the jump scares annoyed me more than they scared me. But it is still a very unsettling movie in general, which is a positive thing. Um, what didn't really work? Um, I, think the f I think the fact that um, the main character 
disappears forever after 25 minutes might disappoint some people, okay? It makes for an interesting ending, for sure. I didn't see it coming. Um, but um, I was kind of looking forward to seeing more of George McKay. He's a great actor, so... I was like, well, I understood that, and it did, it created the epic ending that the movie had. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I clicked on them. It's like, it's like if, I just watched Spiderhead the other day. It's like if they, if Chris Hemsworth disappeared from Spiderhead after the first 25 minutes. I would have been a little bit disappointed. Um, but George Mackay is not Chris Hemsworth, so it's not as bad. The movie doesn't even need, um... George McKay in it. Like, it's, it's almost like a clickbait actor just to get you to click on the movie. And, like, what do you know? It's actually a good movie after you clicked on it, so you're not really mad that you're... Like, I was clickbaited, but I'm not mad about it because it's still a good time. So, yeah. Um, I also felt some of the sounds were overpowering each other at times. Like, there are some odd music choices. Like, the intro and the outro music is the exact same song, and it was like a radio pop song. It doesn't really fit this movie. There were some times where the sounds were really conflicting with each other. You had the heavy British accents, which usually I have to pay more, I have to try and listen to more attentively to hear what they're saying. So you've got the heavy British accents. I remember there was one scene that depicted it perfectly. It was, um, there are two British construction workers. They're like using power equipment and then there's a song playing in the background and then they're trying to talk as well. And then there's multiple sounds conflicting each other at the same time, like the, the, the knocks at the basement that someone's down there. It's just a lot of sounds were kind of mixing and wrong with each other and trying to overpower each other. So I don't like that. Um, yeah, I, I feel like it had more flaws, but honestly, I'm feeling a pretty forgiving now just after watching it. It's like, you know, if you if I only watched the first half of this movie, I would have said stuff like, you know, it's kind of a slow burn. Um, yeah, pacing's kind of off. Characters kind of insufferable. You know, yada yada yada. But by the end of it, it's one hundred percent worth it, and it's actually very cool how everything exists for a reason. Like um, the pregnancy and the baby. <laughs> that literally only that baby only existed to help us understand how time was passing. It's like, because that baby looked like it was like three to five, or I don't know, I'm bad with baby ages, but like, it must have been like three to five years passing since George McKay's character went missing by the end of the movie. So, the, and like stuff like the squash scene at first seems a little bit out of place, but it shows you, it shows you two things actually. One, it shows you that he has a strong relationship with, um, the chief of police, and two, it shows you that he's quite fit, so it makes his, it makes his, um, action scenes a lot more believable, because he's an old, he's an old white guy, or not, not, sorry, I didn't, his race doesn't matter this time. He's an old guy with white hair, so you don't really expect him to be much of a fighter, but his intimidation factor is just going up and up and up, regardless of his age and all that, so, yeah, honestly, I came by, fantastic time, really really exceeded my expectations. I expected, like, I expected, like, a boring graffiti artist movie about, you know, some edgy emo kid who doesn't get along with society. That is not what I got at all, okay? What I got was a thrilling adventure about a psychopathic, extremely prejudiced serial killer, basically, who traps, who, who, uh, who pretends to be gay to lure in the gays, and then he kills them and burns them and then flushes their ashes down the toilet. So it gets pretty dark, pretty extreme. It's not very gr it's not very bloody though, for the record. It's the, um, like, even though they're using, like, the whatever rating, the M rating, I think, um, there is swearing, but, uh, it's actually not as extreme as you'd think. You, you can still, it's, it's shocking in the right ways, okay? I don't like movies that try and shock me with just obscenity. This was not that. This shocked me with its atmosphere and its general tension. So, honestly, the more I talk about it, I'm actually going to raise my score to a 9. I said 8 at the start of this, right? But honestly, this is, I mean, this is a Netflix original. I did not expect something that was actually had substance and is actually going to stick with me. Like, I'm going to be thinking about this movie for multiple weeks, probably. Like, I'm, I'm not going to be able to get this out of my head. Most Netflix original movies, they're gone the minute after I watch them. I never think about them again. This is not the case, though. So, honestly, do I declare this the best Netflix original you've ever watched? 
because the Gray Man was really good as well. I'd have to watch the Gray Man again. But honestly, maybe. I, okay, I think I'm going to put this, for now, I might change this, but I think I'm going to put this as the number one spot of all 22 or 23 Netflix original movies I've watched so far. It, it, it definitely had its issues, don't get me wrong. The sound, the music, you know, the characters are probably not for everyone. Um, and another thing is, like, the characters aren't exactly competent. I know it's kind of victim blaming, but for example, and don't don't at me, because um, I feel like I'd get a lot of hate if this was a woman. So let's just be equal for a second, okay? I would say this regardless if it was a man or a woman. In this case, it happens to be a man. Um, so the gay guy that got lured into the house, he gets his 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 drink is spiked, and then he jumps out of a window and to escape the guy's house. After the guy, like the, whatever his name was, the judge keeps, the judge just admitted that he killed, um, the, like, the, the cheating gay guy. Sorry, there's a lot to uncover with this movie, it's a lot to digest. So, what I'm trying to say is, if you're, if you got your drink spiked and you jumped out of a window to escape someone, why would you ever willingly get in their car again, okay? Come on, come on. But it's not just that. There's more decisions like that. There's a lot of competency issues. Like, it is kind of like a one-by-one one slaughter machine. Like, none of the characters ever team up at any point in this. They're always going in by themselves. It's like, like, three or four people enter that house, and then they just get routinely start going missing. So, yeah. Fuck it, though. Nine out of ten. I came by. Very cool movie. Highly recommend.